All right, so today's photo walk is uh, with the Canon R5. Robert's camera here in Indianapolis gave me this camera to try out, the R5 with the 24 to 70. I'm gonna be walking around downtown Indianapolis and nearby doing some photography. So I'm taking pictures while I'm talking. Uh, if you don't already follow me, I'm a professional commercial and editorial photographer based in Indianapolis. And um, I do these photo walks to kind of show my process for, excuse me, finding great photos in everyday situations. And um, yeah, so we're gonna be walking. I can answer questions about photography. Uh, I'm still kind of getting set up here. The, uh, I'm gonna flip this screen around on the camera so you can see um, what I'm looking at when I'm taking pictures. So I like this building and the light's really good right now. So I kind of want to isolate this The building and the tree and the sky there has a nice kind of combination. So I'm going to show you what I'm looking at. So I have been a professional photographer since like 2005. I'm based in the Indianapolis area and I'm going to get a nice shot of this building before I move on because I think it looks, I like how it looks here. And I do these photo walks to kind of show my process for how I find good photos in like the everyday. Um, <clears throat> so while I'm walking and looking around here, I'm happy to answer any questions and, uh, you know, just general talk about photography. So my background is in journalism and documentary photography. And uh, I do a lot of commercial and editorial work. So this is, I'm Started back kind of far from downtown, not too far, you know, about seven or eight blocks. Thanks for the likes. And uh, I'm going to be heading down that way and just looking for interesting photos in everyday situations. Um, I'm curious about people who have stopped by this morning. Are you all in the Indianapolis area? Are you from other places? Uh, I'm curious about you know, who stops by at, at what times. I'm going to move over here because I want to see those um, two towers. I kind of like, I just look for anything that catches my eye. I like the light is kind of hitting those first. It's just almost sunrise. It's not quite sunrise. It's still technically the blue hour here. Um, this has kind of a cool look to it right there. So I'm going to see, you know, if that'll make kind of an interesting photo. Um, so, Oregon, you're up very early or very late. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. See, I like how the sun catches those windows, too. It has kind of a cool look to it. Um, so I'm using the Canon R5 here this morning and giving it a test run. And so far, midday for you. The light is why I like to get up early. Um, I like the golden hour light that's right around sunrise or sunset. So I could do sunset, but I have, uh, I have five kids and that's typically around our dinner time. So that's usually family time. So I try to go in the morning when I can to uh, get out and get some good photos. Sometimes I'll bring it back to see what other kind of elements I can put in the frame. See if I like anything with that, with the tree in there, just to kind of add another layer. Maybe I'll do a horizontal see I don't know if I like that better or not but at least I've tried it so I can rule it out thanks uh, yeah the the light hello hello Boston awesome a couple Massachusetts people here that's great um, so I'm in Indianapolis Indiana uh, that's where I'm based and um, I do uh, documentary and commercial photography so um, these photo walks are kind of like just a chance for me to get out and practice skills and um, get some interesting everyday situations here. Um, I live just a little bit like just outside of the highway around Indianapolis and 
I like to come downtown because there's more going on in the morning. And my shooting JPEGs. So um, I almost always shoot raw photos because am I zoomed on the way? Let me see where my zoom is at. Okay. Yeah, I'll think about that documentary. Um, I pretty much always shoot raw because um, a lot of times I print my photos. Today I'm using this Canon R5 with the 24 to 70 to 8 um, Robert's camera. It's my local camera shop, and they asked me to test it out and see what I thought of it. I hadn't used Canon's, um, that's nice, the light on the buildings down there. I hadn't used Canon's mirrorless systems yet. I have Canon DSLR myself. Um, to get back about the JPEG raw, I always shoot raw files because it gives me more latitude with the, uh, in the edits. Um, so I, I don't lose the image quality. And uh, this today with this camera, I'm trying out that I don't have on my camera. They have a compressed raw. Uh, so it still has all the quality of a raw, but it's like uh, slightly, well, it's a much smaller file size. So for example, I took this camera out the other day and it was, um, I want to see if I could incorporate those hedges there, but I don't know. A full raw file size, this is a 45 megapixel camera. A full raw is like um, 50 megabytes, so it's pretty big. A compressed raw is like 18 to 20 or so. Um, so it's, it's a lot smaller of a, of a size. So I think that, um, I don't know. The light's good, but I'm not finding something that I really love with that, so I'm gonna keep moving. Um, so I'm going to try the compressed raw today so the files aren't so massive when I go to edit them. If I were shooting a commercial job, something for advertising, I would use the full raw on this camera. But my cameras, I only have, I kind of like the, how that like, there's a lot of verticalness going on here. So I might try that. SD cards. What do I have right now? I have a Lexar or something, I think. I always forget. That's kind of a nice... So something cool about this camera is... So they've moved the controller. My camera, the thumb controller, is down here. And they moved it up here, which I actually am kind of liking. He saw his shadow. That's a bummer. Um, but they've got two... Fo you, I mean, these buttons are all custom pro programmable, but it's like you've got... This button just does its regular um, to the blue, you know, to the square. And then this button, the way it's programmed, what it's doing is it's searching for an eye. So if you're photographing a person, you can push this button and it'll find their eye and focus on their eye. It's really pretty wild. The lens I'm using is a 24 to 70 2.8. Um, so it's the RF. 24 to 70, 2, 8. So it's a, one of, you know, from what I hear people talk about, it's kind of one of the most, the 24 to 70, 2, 8 in their EF also is like one of their most beloved uh, lenses. But it's one that I personally have never owned because I usually go, I usually shoot two bodies. And so I have like a 24 on one and a 70 to 200 on the other. And, uh, if I were shooting just one camera, I could see how a 24 to 70 would be a great range, but um, it's not something that I have a lot of experience with. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the best thing to do if you want me to see any of your pictures is if you're on Instagram, just send me a message on Instagram. I always check my messages there and I can see uh, you know, people's pictures and what they've been posting on there. Um, so, I don't know. Just the light on the building is good here. There's me. So maybe I'll see if I can get something. I'm going to go real... So, I wanted... Today, the videos I'm making 
are, I'm going to just look through this myself here so I can see it better. Today the videos I'm making are, I'm using the camera to test it out, but I'm mostly going to talk about like how, what my process is for finding great everyday photos. And um, that's an interesting, those two buildings there, like right up top. Um, I'm going to make some follow-up videos from this live where I will, um, let's see, Roberts, I'm making a video for Roberts that's going to talk about the differences that I've kind of experienced between DSLR and mirrorless. And then um, I'm going to post an edit of this photo walk on YouTube, probably about a five to seven minute edit. Um, and then what else? I'll post some shorter ones here on TikTok. This has a nice, I like this. I'll show you what I'm looking at after I take the picture. It's got kind of a cool, I like that with the lines of the cars and stuff. Yeah, I'm glad that you find inspiration in some of the you know videos that I do and stuff. That's always nice to hear and I appreciate that and the, it's part of why I do the stuff I want to encourage other photographers to get out and you know take uh, take photos of every day because you know it's easy to not feel inspired by what you see every day and um, a lot of people wait to take photos when they're traveling or uh, have a special event or something but um, you know, one of the things that I like to talk about is the more you do it, the better you'll get. Even just trying to, you know, really stretch yourself and find something interesting in your everyday environment. Because then when you do go to more interesting places or um, have something special going on, the photography is really second nature. And you don't have to, um, you know... Think so hard about it you can just react because to me i think the best photos come from reacting to your surroundings and environment and um yeah so um i think it seems like you know we've got some photographers here what are you all shooting with um i've been primarily using canon since um Oh man, like 2004 is when I switched to Canon. Um, and my cameras that I use regularly are the, I have a couple 5D3s. And um, today I'm, I'm using this R5 with the 24 to 70. So, oh, thanks. Yeah, I think it's a lot of fun. I, there's so much potential for photography content uh, on social. And, and I think so much of the photography content that I see is like, look at me. <laughs> Everybody's like, especially if you go on something like Reels, it's really like, look at me, I'm so great. Look at these pictures, you should be impressed. And I wanna do more, you know, engaging stuff. Like, all right, well, let's talk about how to get good photos. Let's talk about taking pictures where you're at and having fun with it. And uh, I like the idea of kind of showing an everyday process of what I look for. I like this, I guess that's the wall inside is really, I wish there was more to it than what I'm seeing. I don't know if I, so when in doubt, I get closer. So let's try that. I'm gonna get closer. Um, I think if I get something like, I'm going to try to focus through here and see what kind of thing I can do. It's already better than what I was looking at just a second ago. Oh, here, that says Indianapolis up on the wall. I'm going to see if I can do something with that. 
And so the point of the photo walks is to just, you know, get out and practice and, and see what you can come up with where you're at. Um, this is a little bit different for me. Usually when I shoot these photo walks, I'm doing like a, I have a fixed, I have a prime lens, a 35 equivalent that I use. And uh, so having a zoom already, I'm like, oh, I've got to make more decisions than I normally have to make. So I'm kind of looking through the window to see what kind of thing I can, what I can find here. It's kind of interesting. I'll show you what I was looking at here. I don't know. It's not bad. Just something to test out. Try some different things. See what I can come up with. Let me try one more. There's like a finger in there pointing back at me. I kind of like that. It's just about kind of noticing whatever details you can find. I'm going to try one more. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. I'm glad that, that you like it. I like doing this to show for that reason too, to show people like different places where I'm at, connect with people from different cities, the floor tile. Yeah. Um, connect with people from different cities and everything like that too. So, um, let's see. So for anyone just joining, my name is Zach Dobson. I'm a professional documentary and commercial photographer. Um, I'm based in Indianapolis, Indiana, and I do these photo walks as a way to, um, you know, practice my photography as a way to, um, the, the reason I do them live is to kind of show people my process. I like the clouds coming across this building, like brutalist architecture here. Um, that's a cool shot. I'm going to see what I can do with that. So let's see. It is, it is. Uh, people are kind of like love or hate with the brutalist style. I am... You know, it depends on the building. <laughs> I don't... I like this building. It's got an interesting look to it. I think it's just like an apartment building. This is in Indianapolis. I'm going to see what kind of... Am I zoomed all the way out? I think I am. I kind of like... Whoops. I kind of like something here. There's some reflections coming from another building somewhere. They're adding these little spots of color. Good morning, thanks for stopping by. So I'm doing a live photo walk in Indianapolis, Indiana. So this is what I'm looking at right now. Uh, and I kind of just show my process for finding good photos in everyday situations. I'm happy to answer any questions people have about, you know, photography or what I'm doing here today or any of that kind of stuff. I'm gonna try to zoom in. I like that. It's kind of an interesting look. Maybe more of a horizontal. So I'm taking pictures while I'm talking here. So these are, uh, you know, it's a 45 megapixel camera, so the images are huge. And it's easy to crop in tight and get some additional detail. I'm going to use the old foot zoom here and get a little bit closer to try to see what I'm looking for. Um, yeah. So I really like those spots of color that are coming through there. Let's see. It's kind of a cool shot. Um, so usually when I'm out, you know, I just kind of walk around and see whatever draws my eye. It could be the light. It could be, you know, some of the architecture. Um, it's kind of interesting on the side there. I just follow it from there. I like getting out in the morning 
uh, to get the golden hour in the AM. That's kind of an interesting. Let's try that this way too. Do like a 50. Usually when I do these photo walks, I'm using a prime lens, so I can't zoom, but today I'm using a zoom lens, so it's making me think a lot more <laughs> about, um, do I want to zoom in? Do I want to get closer? Like, usually I don't have the option, and I can only get as close as I can walk, and so it's kind of instinctual uh, in that way that um, I know what my focal length is, and I can walk closer, or I can get further away, but now... I have the whole additional element of the zoom and uh, it's making me kind of think more than I'm usually used to thinking during this sort of thing. Just checking out reflections, anything that seems like it could be interesting. I mean that's, you know, honestly one of the things I love about digital is I, I can react a lot more and I don't have to worry about how many frames I have left or if it's worth taking a picture to, to burn a frame of film or whatever. But um, I don't know, just anything that kind of catches my eye. This is kind of an interesting look right here. You want to see what is a picture? Which one? The Coke one or I think this one might be interesting. See, the focus is, there it goes. So you can see what I'm looking at. I like the eyeball. Maybe this is more of a horizontal. If I get, okay, so this is a good example if I change my angle, because the way that I'm looking at it right here, the Coke truck with the good fellas. Let's see if that, it's really dark on the screen. There's some potential to bring that out there and post. The light of the sign is so bright Verse and the sun. Okay, got it. <laughs> uh, I think that I could edit this a little bit to bring out the Coke truck and bring down the highlights there. That could be a decent shot. I'm going to look through the camera to get this one. See, if I get down lower, I can get more. No, I like it like this here. So, um, Maybe I'll come up here where I can uh, set my camera down and turn it around and tell you a little bit about what I'm working with here. So I'm generally heading towards the main part of downtown here, in Indianapolis, doing a live photo walk. I'm going to uh, talk on camera here for a second. I always lose the spot where I can turn the picture around. Here it is. Flip camera. Here we go. Good morning. <laughs> it's a little cold out right now. So, all right. So I'm going to show you what I'm working with here. Can I get the background in there? Uh, that's a little too much. That's all right. It's a little too much contrast. But So today I'm using this Canon R5. Uh, my local hometown camera shop, Roberts, wanted to know what I thought of this mirrorless. I've only used, I've used Canon DSLRs for a long time, but this is my first time I'm using the Canon mirrorless. And I can say, it, like, immediately my first impression was the autofocus is insanely fast. It's really fast autofocus. Um, I'm going to do some more where I kind of demonstrate some of this stuff on a video uh, later, but it's just... Um, I mean, like, if you go on the, can you see through here? Let's find out. Here, let me get this set. It's, uh, yeah, now I got the thing off. I don't know. It's, um, but I'm loving this camera. It's super fast. The autofocus is wild. The image resolution is 45 megapixels. So there's really like a ton of detail, super sharp. The glass is super sharp. So, so far, so good. It's been a lot of fun. Um, the, uh, where is the thing? Yeah. There it goes. I've got like a, I love with these where you can like touch and it'll focus. I'm going to set something up 
properly in the studio so I can show um, just how fast this focusing is. But um, so far it's been a fun process. I'm going to turn this back around and see the building I'm looking at here. The phone camera um, contrasty is what I am seeing in real life here. So I'm going to take this oops, photo here and see what kind of what I can do with it. So what all are you using camera wise? I assume at this point we probably mostly have photographers watching. Let's see what I can do. I'm used to a 35. So when I first took this camera out, usually I use this button for focusing and I kept pushing this button being like, what is this camera looking for? And it was trying to focus on, it's got like an auto setting where it'll focus right on. It looks for people's eye and it works like so well. It's really wild um, to be able to just be like, hey, we're going to focus on the eye here. Now I'm like, oh, there it goes. You can kind of see when it's doing this like searching, it's looking for an eyeball. So it's really cool feature and it works really well. Um, I tried it on my kids and um, yeah, it's pretty cool. So I'm going to keep walking here. So doing these photo walks, I'm just trying to see whatever catches my eye, usually looking at the light. Um, I like to try to layer images as much as possible. So like it, the person on the building and then the buildings in the background see as I move around this way they get closer together so I'm going to see like what can I do with that I like how the the sunlight is just starting to catch the mural there so I was realizing with this this camera I had I hadn't bought uh, any new camera in like five years and uh, almost six about six years I hadn't bought a new camera and I hadn't bought a new I use Canon DSLRs for my commercial work and I have the 5d threes and I hadn't bought a new Canon camera since probably 2014 and um, I would always think like is it worth the money? Like, I'm really happy with my 5D3s. They work great. They, the, the images are great. The quality is great. And uh, so when Roberts asked me to try out this R5, I was like, good morning. Uh, when Roberts asked me to try out this R5, I was like, all right, yeah, sure. I, I've been curious about their mirrorless stuff. And, oh, my God, it is incredible. The focus is so fast. Oh, look, at look, okay. So it has this feature where it'll find an eye, okay, when I autofocus on it. See, look at that. And if I move the camera, it keeps the autofocus right there on the eye. Isn't that wild? Indianapolis. Good morning from Indianapolis. The eye focusing thing is so wild. I can focus just through the square at whatever point I want, or I can push this other button and it goes right to the person's eye. It's so wild. I can't get over it. I'm like, now I'm like, I need this cam camera. Canon, if you're listening, I need this camera. Uh, you can send me one and I will use it every day. It's a great camera. Hey, Chauncey, thanks for stopping by. I know you have one of these. Good morning, SD Jess, too. Uh, good to see you. Sony. Nashley. Yeah, I, a lot of people I know love their Sonys. Um, I had a college professor who was Nikon for a long time, 
uh, he was like a National Geographic photographer. And he switched to Sony probably seven or eight years ago and really loves it. Um, this and... Yes, touch the screen to move the focus. Scott, yes, that's... I love having a touch screen. I've used the 5D4, so I've had some experience with the touch screen. But, um, and I don't have my... My hands are full, so I can't really show it. But um, it is... Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. The um, touch screen is a game changer, and it's so fast. Like, I can touch something, like, up close... And see, I can't really reach it. My hands are full. And then you touch something further away, and it goes so quick. It's really, it's really cool. I'm still, I'm working on this shot here. I kind of want to get from there to here. Um, I like the angle of the building, drawing your eye down towards the uh, larger buildings down there. Can you call it a skyscraper in Indianapolis? I'm not really sure. I suppose you can call it whatever you want. Using a zoom on photo ox is a little bit different for me. Usually I have this like fixed focal length and, and I'm sticking with it. The image stabilization on this camera seems really good too. If I'm not mistaken, oh yeah, both the body and the lens have image stabilization. I'm sure you'd know that, Scott. Well, and Chauncey, both of you. <clears throat> that there's stabilization in the camera and also in the lens. So it's really like a good combination. Um, so that's pretty wild. It said something about eight stops when I was reading about the camera. Uh, if, you, if you guys weren't here and I was talking about it a minute ago, I've, I've been shooting 5D3 since, I don't know, when did they come out? 2012. So I think 2013 and 14 is when I bought my 5D3s. And um, I've used the 4, but um, I never made the jump to, to buying a 4. And I hadn't really considered the RF only because I was not wanting to buy new lenses. So I wasn't really thinking about the RF, but now that I'm using the R series, um, I'm really thinking about it. <laughs> it's, it's a great camera. I like the light in here. I'm gonna see what I can get with this while we're talking. Um, just this autofocus. I mean, for sports, this would be a fantastic camera for sports, 100%. Um, it's got these autofocus settings where it'll follow either people or animals. I know, Chauncey, you were saying you use the animal one sometimes. Uh, it'll follow people or animals or cars. So I could see how this would be a great camera for the motorsports people. This truck just blocked my son here. Um, so it is super cool for sure. So I don't know, just kind of messing around with some stuff to see what I like. Um, I was saying, usually I'm shooting these photo arcs with the prime lens, um, so it's a little bit different to uh, do it with the zoom because it's giving me so many more options than I'm used to. Um, <clears throat> the other thing, so, and I'm going to make a video where I talk more about the difference between the um, Canon DSLRs and the mirrorless. Um, that's going to go on Robert's page, but I'll probably, you know, do something to link it over there. This looks cool. Um, but one thing that I'm noticing, let's see, I'm going to get back to my 35. One thing that I'm noticing is with the new cameras, they've changed the layouts of the buttons. I'm used to the thumb controller being down here. And so there is a little bit of like a muscle memory. My thumb wants to go down here. But I actually like it here, and it's so close to the auto, because I used to always use this for the autofocus. So I would do thumb controller to autofocus. And now, 
somebody is uh, losing their mind down here. But now I can do like um, the thumb controller and the autofocus is right next to each other. So, I'm gonna try. <laughs> Okay, I'm not sure uh, they're... <laughs> yeah, I wish I was a part of that joke that was going on there. Let me see. I have no idea. So, when they were walking by, I tried the, the, <laughs> the eye feature to, for a focus. Here, let me see if I can. So, it did, it picked right up on them as they were walking by. That's the full frame. So, <laughs> I was like, I'm really curious about the eye focus for street photography. Thanks. I couldn't not take that. I always debate, um, and there's a debate I have, uh, both internally and externally about taking, uh, doing street photography and getting photos where I can see other people or not. Usually I keep it somewhat anonymous, but I don't know. I couldn't, I couldn't resist the photo. Uh, I'll have to decide if I want to post it or not later on. But, um, I was curious about this. I, cause sometimes, you know, if you do street photography, and you don't want to draw too much attention to yourself, you might shoot from the hip a certain amount. I'm shooting digital. I'm using the Canon uh, mirrorless, the, the R5 with the 24 to 70 uh, 2.8. So this is a camera I'm, ch I'm testing out. Robert's camera, my local camera shop, asked me to try it out to see what I thought. But you know, if you do street photography, sometimes you're shooting from the hip. And uh, I, I was curious, I thought this, our series brings a whole new level to doing that, to doing the shoot from the hip because it's got that eye focus. So you could, you know, typically people who are gonna, if you don't know what I mean, here I'll show you. Get my reflection here if you can see me. So a lot of times people do street photography will just kind of, they don't wanna draw too much attention to themselves, like just kind of take pictures from down low like this and um, Usually what you'll do is you'll shoot a high aperture like f8, f11, so you get a lot of focus from the foreground to the background. And um, then you can be pretty sure what you're taking pictures of. You know, if you focus about, I don't know, depending on how close you are, let's say eight to 10 feet away from you, and you take that picture at like f8, then the people are probably gonna be in focus. But, but this is like a game changer with this eyeball focus thing. Um, you could shoot from the hip and push this focus so it tries to like focus on somebody's eye and you could be sure that you're getting a person in focus. So you could even shoot from the hip at like, you know, uh, a much wider aperture like f2.8 uh, or something like that and it's going to find that eye and uh, it's going to focus on the person. So it's really... Uh, funding guy thanks for the follow appreciate that <clears throat> it really is a potentially like huge change uh so there's a few things here i'm going to try to incorporate into a photo i'm going to do a reintroduction here in a second um here i'm going to do a reintro let's flip this camera around so i can say hello and i'll have the city behind me hi i'm zach dobson i'm a professional commercial and editorial photographer i'm based here in Indianapolis. I'm uh, testing out the Canon R5 today on a photo walk uh, with the 24 to 70 lens. Um, I do professional, commercial, and editorial photography full time. Um, I do these photo walks regularly to kind of show my process for finding good everyday photos. And um, this time I'm adding in the element of, you know, talking about the gear as well. Um, this has been really an amazing camera. The autofocus is incredible. It's got a lot of features. I'll talk more about some of the features in um, other videos and stuff. So if you're interested in the camera, you know, follow 
Um, I like to do the photo walks to show around the city, what I'm looking for when I'm taking pictures and make it more accessible for people who maybe even just want to see the city and, and uh, what's going on and uh, not get too, too you know, technical on the gear. But um, so I'm going to show some of the stuff I'm looking at behind me here and uh, what I can do for the pictures. But if you're interested in the camera, make sure to follow. Um, I'll direct you towards some of the resources that I'm going to be posting that talk more specifically about the camera. So I'm going to try to get this sign here in with the background. I'm curious to see how photographing this sign will look because of the you know the lights have kind of a an interesting effect in the camera here let's see it's not looking as bright as like what I'm seeing yeah so all right let's keep walking I see uh, Kyle, I saw your thing. Are you here? I saw your thing pop up. I know Kyle's going to know. Who's going to... Can anyone see who that uh, mural is from this far away? This is one of our most famous uh, Indianapolis native sons. Kurt Vonnegut. Everybody loves Kurt Vonnegut. Great writer, cool guy from Indianapolis. Yeah. Alex Todd Anderson knows. Everybody loves Kurt Vonnegut. Um, just looking for some different photos at the moment to see whatever kind of draws my eye. Growing Mind 7. Thank you for the follow. Appreciate that. So I think if I walk up closer, I could get a nice angle on Kurt there and maybe see some of the building in the background. So one thing that I talk about a lot in these things, thanks for the likes, everybody. I appreciate it. You miss Indy? Are you from here originally or lived here for a time? Um, I grew up in northern Indiana and Fort Wayne, and I've been in the Indianapolis area since uh, 2006. So it's been a it's been a few years now. So the, one of the things I talk about is getting closer and see how the angles change and how things look different when you move up close. Thanks for the likes. So I'm going to get up closer to Kurt here and see what I can do with this. It's kind of a nice angle here. I'm going to show this again for anybody who wasn't here. Something really cool about this R5 is it's got this eye focus. So watch. This is the regular focus. See the square there? It just focuses on whatever I'm pointing at. Oh, you moved from Fishers to Fort Wayne. Yeah, I grew up in Fort Wayne. I lived right by Snyder High School. So this is the regular focus. It goes on to the square wherever you put the square and you can move the square around wherever you want it to focus. Well, that's another thing. There's like infinite focus points on this camera. On my, uh, I mean, you can go all the way to the edges to focus, that's wild. On my 5D3, you, there's only like a handful of focus points. So I love how many there are on here. So look, you can click on whatever focus point you set. All right, so there's that. But then I have this other button set up. It finds the eye, watch. So it found his eye and it's focusing on his eye. And wherever I move the camera, it's still focusing on the eyeball, which is like really, I mean, I kind of want, like I could almost pick up this camera for that reason alone. It's really, oh, MFA, awesome. What's your, uh, you know, what's your area of, of study in that? Is it photography or like painting, drawing, sculpting, any other kind of things? I came from a jur journalism background, documentary, so um, I've gotten more into the art side of photography in over the years. So I kind of almost wished I'd st studied more of the art stuff. 
but you know uh here we go here's here's what i was looking at there's that but i kind of i don't know i like being back a little further you get more of the shadow let me try a wide angle so the eyeball focus they have all these different things you can do with that is and I'll, I'll, I'll show you. Let me move a little bit closer. I kind of like how he's partly in the shadow there. What you can do... Yes, you can turn it off completely or you can program it. There's all these programmable buttons. So, this is where you select your focus with and this is the autofocus. So, I like how they're right next to each other. So, I can select a point. You can see it move. And then I can push it to focus. And then... No, Kurt would never do that. He's a gentleman. He just likes to keep his hand warm. And then the way this is set up is this is the regular autofocus, and this one finds the eyeball. You can do... So you can change anything. You could make this the eyeball focus and this the regular focus. You could turn the buttons off completely. You could... Um, you can turn off that eyeball feature. That's... It, it, it has specialized autofocus, so it'll follow people. It'll follow or animals, or cars. Those are like all three different settings you can choose. Um, so you can set any focus button to be any one of those things. So it's pretty, it's pretty cool how it works, for sure. Um, I've left it on the eyeball thing. That's kind of interesting. Painting and sewing, that's cool. Film photography. See, when I was in school, I was in college between 2000 and 2004, so most of us were shooting film. We had some digital cameras at the school you could use. This is a cool... I'm, I'm working this scene here to see what I can find. Um, we had some ah, digital cameras you could use. And, but um, all of us still mostly shot film. All of us own film. I only knew one kid in college who owned a digital camera. He owned like a Nikon 1D, like the original 1D. And um, you know, it was probably like a $5,000 camera at the time. R6, how do you like the R6? This is my first time using any of the R series cameras and I'm very impressed. The focus is unbelievable. Um, I, I did a short test the other day. I, this was as close as I could get. There's something there, potentially. It's hard to see, but uh, there's a potential image there. Um, the 45 megapixels is wild, really wild. Let me try this and see what. I don't know. You know, sometimes things work, sometimes they don't. I like to see where I see light coming in. Like you can see some sunlight hitting certain spots in there. It looks kind of cool. Let's see if there's anything I can do with that. I'm always looking for reflections and things. Yeah, so I've heard good things about the R6, too. Um, I would be curious to see what some of the different features are other than, you know, the image size. I'm trying the, I always shoot raw, but I'm trying the compressed raw to save a little space to see what I think. Um, I, I guess I just assumed that's what C raw stands for, compressed raw. <laughs> I don't think I officially looked that up. Um, thanks for the likes. So I'm in downtown Indianapolis doing a photo walk, trying out the new camera here, seeing what I think of it. So far, I think it's pretty, pretty cool. This is interesting.
There's some kind of photo here for sure. Um, so I'm looking at my camera thinking here. Go in when Stouts is open. Yeah, I haven't been into. I haven't been into this one. There used to be one up in Carmel, but it is not there anymore. Let's see what I can do with these uh, reflections and things like that. Gosh, you we're closed. Yeah. There's a guy in there with a the mop. I don't want to. I don't want to bug him. I like the, you can see the reflection of the um, banner, the banner, the awning. So yeah, if you're just joining, my name is Zach. I'm a documentary and commercial photographer. Um, I do these photo walks to kind of show everyday process for finding good photos where you're at because you know if you love photography you don't want to only take photos when you're <laughs> traveling and going on trips because how often is that you know once or twice a year if you're lucky so I like to do these uh, you know and see everyday locations around where I'm at different parts of the city and um, just kind of practice my skills so when I go to do either in my case, client work or to do my own personal photography, I've kind of built up this practice and ideally you kind of want to be, you know, one with your camera, want things to be like second nature, right? So then you don't have to think when you're going to take photos. Yes, I am taking a picture of this glove on the ground because why not? So um, today I'm, I'm using this R5, my local camera shop, Canon, ask, can, camera shop, Robert's camera asked me to take out this R5 and get my impressions of it. I'm in uh, Indianapolis and um, one of the cool things about Robert's too is that they've got a really amazing, this is cool. Uh, used Photo Pro is their used camera division, and they've got like amazing. If you're into film, they have amazing film cameras. Like um, I was just looking at them the other day. They've got a whole bunch of Leica uh, M3, M6. Um, I saw some uh, Mamias in there. I saw an Xpan Hasselblad Xpan. Um, they've got all kinds of really cool stuff. So if you're into, you know, even looking for used gear, go check out their used Photo Pro because they've got some really cool stuff in there for sure. So I'm messing around with this light here to see what I think. This would probably look good in black and white. Yeah. Let's see. If I get too close, the eye sensor switches over to the eye. And then I tried it um, this way too. I think I like this way better. So this makes me want to like zoom in more with the 70. So it looks something like that. Yeah, Mass Ave, Massachusetts Avenue, downtown Indianapolis. This is kind of, this street right here, I'm at the end of the street. Uh, so if you look this way, just on the other side of that building, is uh, the main part of downtown. And then this starts Mass Ave, runs off at a diagonal, and it's where kind of like the main part of the bars and restaurants and shop shops and uh, art galleries and stuff are all kind of down that. It goes down pretty far. So it's a, it's a cool area for sure. I'm gonna move back a little bit and try a little bit more here. See, I like with this, when you get, well, that backlight coming through is really cool. If I move back, 
and zoom in more without stepping in the traffic, it gives a whole different kind of look to it. I'll show you what I'm looking at here in a second. The sun is not quite, yeah. So it's something like that. And again, so much of this is, thanks for the likes. So much of this is, um, you know, trying stuff out, um, getting used to using the camera, uh, even cameras you've had for years, you really want it to be like second nature so you're not thinking while you're out about um, you know what you're doing. You can, you can run more on instinct. See, good light, getting out when there's good light just kind of makes everything different. Like even the scooters here. <laughs> it's like even the scooters look nice. So I'm going to go more towards the circle down here. Um, so I think a lot of times with photography, people feel like oh, I need to be somewhere interesting. I need to like go somewhere cool. I need to have something specific to take photos of. And that's one thing that I try to show isn't necessarily the case. Like here, look, I mean, just what I see is this line. I see that the steam was the first thing that caught my eye. I saw this line going towards it. I like the arrow right here. And I like these strong lines of the building. So you've got these like hard lines and then the steam makes this kind of like soft uh, ness to it. And so I'm gonna stop and try to get the picture here. And you know, uh, get down, get, get higher, get lower. I would say yes, this camera is intuitive to use. Thank you for the question. Um, I mean, I've been using Canon and it, so the switch to the newer features are um, faster than I thought they would be. A couple of the buttons are in different places than I'm used to, but it actually turns out they're in better places than they were before. So it's not a change that uh, I mind making. A lot of times when I pick up, especially like a different brand camera, sometimes just the feel of it, like the ergonomics are like off to me and I don't like how it feels in my hand. But this, um, it feels really instinctual to use. So now I've got the steam blowing like right at me. Just trying some different stuff, you know, to see what I like, see what works. So I think, um, Let's see, I'll show you what I was looking at. That one, not as much, because the steam was blowing sideways, but some of these were, like, that's not bad. I'm gonna try to get there, so you can see the full photo. Sorry, I'm trying not to shake too much. That's, that's kind that's not bad. You know, it's not like a award-winning photo, but this is about practice. It's about, you know, experimenting. It's about trying stuff. A lot of times I'll experiment with, like, a technique of, of framing or, or focus or back focus or something that then I'll take to um, what I'm doing later. Yeah, there's not a lot of people out right here. It's still early. Where I'm at, it's 8.39 in the morning. So there's a few people here and there. If I get more towards the center part of downtown, there'll probably be some more people out. But... Um, a lot of times when I go out in the morning, it's more about uh, finding uh, light and um, you know just compositions with buildings and reflections and windows and and things like that. So at different times of day, there's different things for me to see and, and photograph. And yeah, at this time of day, there's not a lot of people out. Um, and I think when it's, when it's busy and it's crowded outside, it's easy to kind of incorporate people into the photos. But it feels funny when there's only scattered people here and there. 
to kind of get <laughs> into a spot where they would be in the in the pictures very much. Just kind of looking to see. Uh, Indianapolis is where I'm at. Let's see. I'll go. Um, I'm gonna go down this way. W something that's catching my eye are the reflections coming off of these pillars here are kind of nice. So I'm going to see if I get a little bit closer what I can do to work with that. Um, so I am doing a partnership with Robert's Camera. They're my camera shop here in Indy. Um, they, although they do uh, serve people nationwide. I'm realizing I took a picture here last spring that I put in a zine. Well, that's funny. Anyway, sorry. So I'm, I'm partnering with Robert's Camera. Um, they're my local camera shop. They do serve, you know, uh, the whole of the country here. And uh, they asked me to test out this R5. So I'm using this Canon R5 today. They wanted to know what I thought of it. And um, to test it out and talk about it a little bit. So the R5 is uh, five is... Uh, is the lens that I'm using with that. And um, I primarily use Canon's 5D3. And uh, I, I've always been so happy with it. I've never really thought about upgrading, but the R5 is really making me think about upgrading because there's so many. Uh, and I've just used it. This is like the second day I've used it. The autofocus is super fast. Um, the touch screen is amazing. Um, it has like an eyeball kind of focus feature where it'll track people's eyes. It's really pretty cool. Um, I like where they've moved the buttons to. It's got a nice uh, intuitive feel to it. I'm going to talk more about the camera itself in future stuff uh, that I'll be posting. So follow me on TikTok and YouTube if you want to see more stuff about the camera. Um, I'll talk more about my impressions of it because some of the buttons and things are in different places than what I was used to. And once I move past the muscle memory of it, um, I really like the spots that they have them now. They're a lot more uh, intuitive. So another thing I like a lot is there's this. So you've got the dial. You know, this is traditionally shutter speed, which is what I have it at. And then this is aperture. And then this mode has a dial to it. So this is the ISO. And to be able to change the ISO without pushing a button or going into a menu, I really love that. That's been great. Um, another cool thing is, I'm gonna set this down. There's like a ring. So you've got your zoom here. You've got ma your manual focus here. And this ring, it kind of clicks. This ring is custom programmable. So you could set this ring to be aperture control. You could set the ring to change modes, to change ISO, to change like all kinds of stuff. Thanks for the follow, Alex. Um, so that's cool that you can have cut the programmable features on the lens like that. Um, it actually uh, works kind of well, and I'll, I'll do some more videos about what I think of that. Because when I'm using two hands to shoot, and I'm holding one hand, when I'm holding my left hand here, I'll show you. Under here, it's actually easy to use this for the aperture, is what I've been testing it as, and I kind of like that. Because then I can keep my thumb, here I'll show you. Because then I can keep my hand with my thumb on the controller. So instead of going back down here and back up here to change the aperture. I can change the aperture with my hand that's already on the lens and keep this one on the autofocus and I don't have to move it off of there. So really like logistically it works pretty well. So I was doing an hour photo walk. I've, I've uh, passed my hour. I've got a little bit of battery life left. I'm at about 16%. So, you know, I'll hang out for a few more minutes here. I, I feel like there's something here I could work with. Uh, 
Um, so what all, what all, this is interesting. I don't know what about this is interesting to me, but it is. You've got this, and then there's just this stairway down to a blue door. I don't know if there's a picture there or not, but I'm going to find out. Um, I always just try to, uh, you know, see what catches my eye uh, and not overthink things. Like, I don't think, will this make a good picture? I'm going to just say, there's something about this that catches my eye. So I'm going to go shoot it. This is kind of a nice spot too, for sure. I like the black and white. Uh, the black and white of it is kind of nice. So I'm going to take a picture here and see what I think. Very cool. Yeah, thanks for the likes. What, um, so where are we at here? How many people, where, where's everybody tuning in from? I talked to some people earlier that were from, let's see, we had Boston, we had Oregon, other spots in Massachusetts. There's something kind of funny about this. I think I can get a photo with it. I'm gonna see what I can do. You guys tell me, tell me where you're tuning in from. It's some UK people here earlier. I know it's like, yeah, midday. What is it? It's eight here, so it's probably like one, one, two o'clock there. Richmond, Virginia. Welcome. Thanks for coming by. Here, I'm going to try, I'm going to try this. This is interesting to me. Boise. Texas, Missouri, Germany, hey -o. I love doing these lives. It's so cool to see where people are coming in from. I'm going to show you. I think this was kind of cool. That's kind of interesting. You know, thanks for the likes. Uh, doors, doors to nowhere. I mean, obviously it goes somewhere, but... Uh, not to anywhere I'm going to find out. I do wish there were more people so I could have people walking by on either side of this photo. I see somebody way down the block. I might hang out for one more second. I'm shooting at the 24. So this is where, this is where the zoom comes in handy. Because I typically shoot a 35 when I do photo walks. And, and it's a little tighter than I want it to be. When I shoot the 35, here I'll show you. When I shoot the 35, that's, that's as much as I can see, which is a decent photo. But what I really like is backing up here, and look how much more I can see with that 24. I can see that truck and everything in there, which I like that photo. Oh, really? That's funny. It's funny when you see buildings, you're like, did the same architect make both of these buildings? Like back before the internet, did they know? They just used the same design that somebody else used in a different city. We had, uh, where I grew up, we had high schools on uh, opposite ends of town that were like exactly the same building. It was really weird. But um, so I'm gonna take a picture of this door and there's somebody coming down the sidewalk. So, Anything that catches my eye is what I'm doing. And something about this too is I think people, one thing I like to say about photography, color photography is that, is that color. Yeah, that's a good idea. I don't see any more doors here. Maybe there's one on the other side. One thing I like, one thing I always say about color photography is it's not about taking pictures in color it's about taking pictures of color so the the colors here are a big part of the subjects the fact that that truck is red is part of the composition it wouldn't be as interesting with a neutral color and the door being blue it's a little dark on the screen here but i have room to edit that plenty of room to bring that out a little bit so it's really minimal it's mostly gray it's mostly gray with some black and then you've got the red and the blue are the main focus there. Um, let's see, I'm still at about 16% of my battery, so 
All right. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. I don't usually get bothered by people too much. I'm going to set this down. Usually people don't care what I'm doing. My hand is becoming difficult to maneuver. It's, it's, it's a little bit cold. I picked the warmest day this week to do the photo walk. I'm not really sure what the temperature is right now, but it's probably like in the 30s. Um, so, see that ray of, of light coming through there is something that is catching my eye. So I'm gonna walk over there. I like the people walking into that building so I might go over there and see if I can do something with that. Man, I'm an hour into this, and really, just now, my hand is starting to go numb. I don't really have good gloves for wearing while I'm taking photos. It's not, I'm not usually out. Yeah. I don't mind being out in the cold, but I hate being cold. So usually I wear, I bought these massive gloves but I can't really use these on the camera. That's a glove that I'm wearing on my um, phone holding hand. See, this would be better with people walking through. There's like, I'll show you what I'm seeing in the camera. If this was uh, someone coming through, this scene would be a nice picture. So, this is the type of thing I'm looking for. This is why I, I love doing these photo walks, just because things change every day. The light comes in from a slightly different angle every day. You know, the plants change, the people change. Oh, there was just this person walking through there, and the hair was like blowing behind them, and it looked so cool. But I didn't, I couldn't get to it in time. Um, just kind of seeing. So sometimes, you know, I'll play the waiting game. Yeah, I should get some of those touchscreen gloves for sure. Now here, I'll let myself be in the frame. I don't see anybody headed this way, so. That is a challenge if you like to do street photography and you're not in like a place that's super busy all the time. It can be hard to incorporate people at a time like this in the winter. There's not many people out. Yeah, it is kind of does look like that, doesn't it? It does give them like a human type shape to it. interesting shooting kind of the street usually I shoot a 35 but having for um, street photography but having the zoom that has a 24 to uh, the 24 is interesting to be extra wide you really got to get close I know Gary Winogrand at least especially like midway through his career switched to, to doing like a 28 so he was shooting pretty wide for street photography most people do like a 35 or a 50 but uh, 28 is pretty wide. <laughs> yeah, it's a cool building. That's the U.S. courthouse and post office. All right, I'm going to go over towards the circle. I'm about 13% on my battery. I'm just going to see this out until my battery is done. Let's see. I'm going to go this way. I don't know why they covered those. You wouldn't think they'd need to cover, like, uh, those are, like, bronze statues. I don't know why they would feel the need to cover them. Just kind of looking down this way, shooting with the longer lens here. Get some of the... not bad. I'll go around in a circle to see if there's any people walking around. I can get incorporate some people before I'm done for the day here. It's 
keep the pigeons off, huh? Oh, that's interesting. Today, I wonder, is it worse in the winter? Maybe it's just too hard to clean them in the winter, I suppose. That makes sense. Um, all right, so I'm going to do one last kind of intro here to say what I'm doing. Uh, my name is Zach. I'm a professional commercial and editorial photographer. Um, today's photo walk is brought to you by Robert's Camera. It's my local camera shop um, here in Indianapolis. They do serve nationwide. They are great. I love them. I use them all the time. They asked me to take out this R5. Uh, so they gave me this R5 to test out. Uh, I'm loving this camera. It's incredible. I've used Canon DSLRs for, I don't know, 16, 17 years. This is my first time using the mirrorless, the R5, um, with the 24 to 72.8. And um, it's an amazing camera. The autofocus is lightning fast. I cannot believe how fast the autofocus is. Um, it's got a really cool feature where it'll do that I've been loving a lot is um, it'll find a person's eye and as they move through the frame or you move the camera's frame, it keeps the focus on their eye. This is an amazing feature for portraits and even street photography, I think, being able to <clears throat> focus on the eye. Yeah, uh, in Indianapolis, we do get a decent amount of snow. It depends on the year. Some years we get a lot of snow, sometimes we don't. Um, this year we've had just a little bit. Yeah. But um, it's been a lot of fun. This is what I'm, I'm hoping, you know, we're going to be the first of many partnerships with Roberts. Uh, and they have a lot of amazing gear to available and to test out. And they have a used photo pro. Um, they really have a great used department. Uh, if you're into film and stuff too, I mean, they've got amazing film cameras, digital cameras. Um, I always love to stop in and... Sorry, I'm getting distracted by the bell here. So, my battery is getting a little bit low. Oh, you've got some friends that are based out of here. Yeah, yeah, happy to do it. I'm gonna stay on until my battery dies. <laughs> I'm at 13% right now. The cold is um, the cold is not great for battery life. I used to be able to do like a two-hour photo walk if I wanted to go that long, but out in the cold, I've been on a little more. I guess an hour and 20 minutes. I don't know if they do that with the naming of the bricks here. I'm not sure uh, if they do around the monument. No. I don't think they do. They've got the, they're doing all kinds of repair over there. So they've got, I can't even walk over to the monument today. I didn't realize that, but you know, we can walk around it. Um, I know they do a lot of like stuff with the naming bricks at the brickyard at the motor speedway. A lot of people have bricks with the names and stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know. I don't... It's possible they might have like a section or something uh, that's for that. Um, so, these are... Well, they do right here, but this is the Columbia Club. They've got names on the bricks there. That's probably specific to the club. Oh, nice. Heathen spinster. <laughs> Thanks for that additional info. Um, so yeah, I'm based here in Indianapolis. I do um, commercial and editorial photography uh, as my business. And I do these photo walks to kind of talk about getting great photos in everyday situations and, you know, practicing looking for um, photos where you're at because you know a lot of times people wait and only take pictures when they're on a trip or at a special occasion 
but just getting out and practicing every day. Um, you know, I'm always trying to follow the light to see, you know, where the light's hitting to make an interesting photo or just anything that catches my eye. I'm not really sure what this car is doing here. Can't tell if there's anybody in it or not. This is not really a parking place. So, am I gonna take a picture of this? Yes. Yes, I am. It's hard to get because it's so bright behind it. I don't know. Sometimes things are just interesting and I don't necessarily get a good picture out of it, but I know, poor G8 for sure. I'm not sure what would make this better. Sometimes just waiting. Uh, I find something else to do with it. This is Indianapolis, Indiana. I'm on the circle right now. Um, the monument circle. So this is the Soldiers and sail Sailors Monument, 1861. So it was really like they had started building this before the Civil War. So it's not even like a Civil War monument. Um, which I don't know. It's interesting to me for some reason. Um, so this is like the center. There's a circle, you know, with the bricks and everything. And there's like... like you know, uh, so this is a, like a theater here. Um, you know, and there's different banks and office buildings and hotels around the circle. And then the, there's, the grid goes out from here. I can't tell where I'm hearing. Oh, I'm like, I hear a saxophone. Is somebody playing saxophone? Maybe I'll go take their picture. I was standing next to a speaker. Yeah, <laughs> rando sax indeed. So, you know, a lot of times, oh, here, here's the names. See, people were asking about that. Now I see it. So they're actually on the circle, not around the outside. So there we go. Have I ever been asked what I'm doing? Um, probably, it's not very often I had... Sometimes people are like, when I have my headphones, I, I'm wearing my earbuds to talk into the live, and um, people don't people don't ask. They don't they don't care at all. Um, but uh, the uh, I had one situation where I was walking down the sidewalk. I was in Cincinnati, and I was taking pictures of, you know, the sidewalk was right next to. It, it was like a downtown kind of area. The sidewalk was right next to a bar. I was taking pictures of the bar window and the person was like, came out and was like, uh, you can't take pictures in here. I'm like, well, I can. <laughs> I, I don't think I said that. I think I was like, oh, I'm just taking pictures of the reflections in the glass, which I pretty much was. But also like, you know, if you're on the street, you can take pictures of the windows and what you see. So that's uh, allowed for sure. So, um, the, uh, but even then, you know, usually if in that situation, I'm just like, all right, and move on because I don't really care if it's, if I need to get a picture of something, I'll argue with people, <laughs> but if I'm just taking random photos, I'm like, I'm not going to get into arguments about it, but it's really rare that anybody even cares or asks um you know being out in public everybody knows i mean people don't not everybody knows what the laws are um but everybody knows that you know people take photos in public and people are allowed in uh 
the U.S., you're allowed to take pictures of anything in public um, at any time. You don't have to have people's permission or anything like that. Um, so it's just like a, it's just like, um, you know, it's fine. I don't usually get people, I'll, I'll walk past people and snap a photo. Yeah, I'm in Indianapolis. What kind of things are off limits? That's a good question. So anything in public you can take a picture of. There's nothing off limits. If you're in public, nothing is off limits. You can take somebody's photo. Uh, you can take pictures like here. Like here's a restaurant. I look, I'm on a sidewalk. Here's a restaurant. I could take pictures. If people were dining right here, I could stand in the window and I could take a couple pictures. Um, anything you can see from public. So, you know, if somebody's standing in a window of the building, I could take a picture of a person standing in the window right there. If you can be seen in public, your picture can be taken. Um, now, the limits really come in with what can I do with that photo. What I can do with that photo is um, publish it as like news. Uh, I could put it on a blog, I could put it in a newspaper or a magazine. I could um, sell a print of it as art. I could do art related things with it. What I cannot do is put it in an advertisement. When a person is recognizable, you have to have their permission to be in an ad. So um, if I'm doing photos, like let's say visit Indianapolis, the tourism board has hired me to do photos and I'm doing photos on the street. In order for them to be able to use a photo if a person's recognizable, then I have to um, get that person's signature. I have to have them sign a release. Now, if a person's not recognizable or identifiable, if the person's like blurred out or the picture is from behind or you can't see someone's face or a picture is like a silhouette, you don't need a person's permission in that situation. It's only if you can see their face and they're recognizable. Um, it gets a little bit different with like ticketed events. So like when I've worked for the Pacers, the NBA team, um, if you're in there, you could be photographed and put in an advertisement. Uh, and that's part of what you agree to when you buy a ticket. So when I worked, when I've worked for them, I didn't have to get releases signed because it's a ticketed event. Thanks for the likes. Appreciate it. Um, so that is the situation with that. Um, that's stuff, you know, obviously I have to know for my job. Um, what's allowed and what's not. There's things like photographing in public buildings. Like I could go, you know, the, the, the state building up here is a public building. I'm allowed to take pictures in there. You know, private building you cannot take pictures in. Um, there's places like shopping malls, indoor or outdoor, where it's private property that's publicly accessible. So you have to abide by the rules. But technically you, can, you could take pictures in a place that's publicly accessible, that's privately owned, but they can ask you to stop and you have to follow their rules or they can ask you to leave. So, you know, if you go to like an outdoor shopping mall, there's not usually somebody there like stopping people from taking pictures. Although if you show up with a big camera, they might ask you, what are you doing? And please don't take pictures. So, um, I don't know, that's some of the kind of general stuff about that. Deluxe 101, thanks for the follow, appreciate it. So um, I'm kind of coming near the end. I'm in Indianapolis, Indiana. So this is the state capitol building right here. Um, I don't know, I might try to take a photo here, see what I think. I like shooting buildings when there's these strong shadows. Just kind of gives some more depth and interest to it. Um, I don't know. Trying to incorporate some other elements like the street lights and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy to talk about this kind of stuff. Um, it's interesting and important 
to me, so I like to share it with others. I think maybe I'll walk over there. I don't know. I'm not going to go inside <laughs> while I'm broadcasting. There's like security checkpoints and stuff. I don't know. I'm not going to go inside <laughs> while I'm broadcasting. There's like security checkpoints and stuff. But, um, oh, thanks so much. Millweb1, thanks so much. I appreciate that. Um, so kind. I really enjoyed doing these live photo walks and talking about photography with you all. My my battery is at 5% right now, so I'm not sure how much longer I'll be on. Too kind. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm happy to share the info. Uh, I'm happy to answer any other questions anybody has about, I, I mean, any kind of, uh, you know, what are you allowed to do with photos? What about, you know, copyright? Uh, about actually taking pictures? About any other kind of stuff? Um, Let's see. 5D4, yeah, I, I have 5D3s, are the cameras that I use. I'm, uh, this is, um, today, my local camera shop, Roberts, asked me to test out this R5 and see what I thought of it. I do love it. Which statues? Morton is more, I don't know Morton's story, so I can't speak to that. Um, yeah, I'm happy to share info and uh, give any other information. I kind of like this. is an interesting... There's a lot more contrast on my camera than what you can see here. I'll show you what I mean in a second. So if I disappear, it means my battery is dead, and I will see you all later. I'm going to be posting these photos that I took on the photo walk um, on my channel. Uh, and I'll be posting some stuff on YouTube as well. I'm going to do like a long cut of this with the images that I took. By long cut, I mean five to seven minute video on my YouTube. And then here on TikTok, I'll post like short ones. I'm making a video for Roberts that they're going to have on their channel about the differences between DSLR and mirrorless. So you can check that out to follow Roberts, Roberts Camera. Uh, it's Robert's camera here on TikTok and on YouTube. So, um, yeah, this has been a cool experience with this camera. It's really the autofocus was my number one thing that I noticed about how amazing it is. And there's a lot of um, kind of functionality things that I like, how they've changed the layout and the buttons since my 5D3 uh, cameras some of that sort of stuff. R5 is, yeah, it's, it's amazing. I mean, I have, I own Canon 5D3s. I've used the 5D4s several times, um, but I never made the upgrade. And the R, the focus is unbelievable. Um, the, and the eye, the feature that focuses on eyes is, Roberts is family owned. It's, uh, it was started in like 1956, I think, um, by a local family. And um, the person who owns it now is their granddaughter, I believe. So it's still in the family. Yeah, it's very cool. Uh, yeah, the R3 looks interesting. It is, it's a big one, though, for sure. Uh, that full-size... Um, that full-size camera. Yeah, I like it too. I always stop in there and buy, oh, this is interesting photo, all the tire marks on the ground. I'm going to get that. I like this. I'm going to mess around with this for a second. I'm using the 24 to 70 2.8. So it's, uh, I'm, I'm enjoying it. I asked for this one because I know a lot of people really like this lens um, on, on the EF version too. So um, it's a cool, it's a good lens. I'm trying something here with this. Um, yeah, I'm at 3%, so I might disappear at any moment. But um, 
yeah, tune in. I'll be doing some more stuff with the R5 and about the R5. Um, and yeah, I'm making a video compare and contrast with it, with the DSLRs. But yeah, um, I love the touchscreen. I love where they, that they've moved the button up here. The multi-controller is a lot easier to use at the top and it's right next to the autofocus. I used to have to do well, this, I'm testing this out for them, so this isn't my camera. I've, I've been using it for a couple days. I'm not sure. I think the R5 body right now is 3500 and the lens, I want to say, is maybe two grand. So, yeah, you're probably looking at a, a $5,500, $5,600 setup between these two. I don't know the exact price of the lens, but I did notice that the R5 is right now... Um, Marked down from uh, 3,900 to 3,500, but a lot of people I've talked with this morning have this camera and really like it a lot. Um, but the uh, I like what they've done with the buttons here. The controller and the autofocus are right next to each other, so it it makes things a lot faster. And uh, which one? Which building? We've got the arts garden here. That's a public spot you can go into. I'm not sure what the best spot to get into it from where I'm at right now. Um, this theater back here is a cool building too. Um, there are some nice buildings around here. Oh yeah, cool. This is a popular spot. I don't think anybody's there right now. That's one thing I don't, you know, I'm not going to take pictures of unhoused people. But I will take a picture of their stuff there since there's nobody in it. It's just kind of interesting. Um, so yeah, I will be talking about this camera a lot more in some other videos. All right, I'm at 1%, so I'm just going to end it before I just drop off randomly. So thanks a lot for stopping by. Um, I'll post this full live up on YouTube uh, shortly, so if anybody wants to check that out. And, um, yeah, I'll be doing more live photo walks. I'm, I'm going to be scheduling them, so if you follow me, you can see my events page, and you can register for the live events, and that will mean you get a notification when it's about to happen and when it's happening. So... Um, thanks for the follows. Yeah, Indy. I would stay on and chat longer, but my battery's at 1%. I'm about to go. So take care. I'll be doing more of these soon. So fun. Thanks, everybody.